Okay, I wanted to shoot a quick follow-up here uh, because you're absolutely right. I did forget to show one thing. Uh, plus, I got a bunch of other cool stuff to answer some of Tara's questions. So let's come back in here. And as of right now, you see how all this stuff is lined up, and that's because I have the code turned on. So I'm going to go up to my CSS, and we're going to turn this code off just for a minute here so you can see what it's going to look like when we turn this off. Come on. All right, that should do it. Okay, so what we have is, first off, two-column row. This is what we had on yesterday's video. So we got two-column row right here, and then I have four element icons, icon elements stacked on top of each other. That's all it is. It's just four of them in here in a single column stacked on top of each other. Now, Tara also had the question of what about could you use some other elements? So here I just took two text elements and stack them on top of each other. Now, part of how this is going to show up is also going to be dependent upon how you set your column widths here. So in this one here, I have this pretty far over to the right. In fact, let's just bring it back one. Um, and so they'll they'll fill up this entire space because it says make each one of these because there's four of them. We want them each to be 25%. So they will take up all the space in here. Same thing down here. I'm setting these two to 25% each. So they'll take up half, I'm sorry, 50% each. So they'll take up half the space once we turn the code back on. Now down here, what I did is I just have a now a one column row here. I had two column rows. Here I have a one column row. And so I just have two headline elements in here. So again, I'm gonna set these to 50% and then they will be side by each here and um, across an entire uh, width of the page. And then down here at the bottom, I thought, well, let's create a new section. Let's drop two rows into this section. And right now you're seeing they're only showing 50% because let me come in here, turn off the second part of this code. Now they're going to be showing as 100% width. So, um, so we got a column. I mean, we got a section here. We got two one column rows. And when we're done, these guys, these two rows will actually be side by side. So you could have multiple elements in each one of these rows and they will be side by side and they should maintain that when we go to any viewport with including a mobile phone. Now, a lot of this stuff isn't going to work because you're not going to be able to put a bunch of big images in there. It's going to squish it all over the place and make a complete mess. So you're not going to want to use this a lot. But in the cases where you need the two things side by each on mobile, you're going to want to use this code. So we'll go back into our CSS and we will just take this out. So we'll just do one at a time. So we took that out and now it made all four of these side by side. And then we'll go back in on the second one. And we will take that out. So now we have essentially two columns I just created inside of this one column over here. So now we'll go CSS one more time, turn that off. So now we took two text elements that have been sitting on top of each other, put them side by side, all inside of a single row. And then the final one, come down here to the bottom. We'll take that out, make them 50% width. And there you go. You have two rows now. You can see they're blue. You have two rows now sitting next to each other. So again, and like I said, in here, you could come in, you could put in more text, bullet points, images, whatever you wanted, and have them side by side, uh, which is actually a pretty cool way of doing it. I've done this actually with sections too, where I'll build out an entire section so that you have all the different layers of backgrounds and everything else you can do by having the section, the row, and then the element, and then taking that entire section and using some JavaScript code, actually putting that inside of a column. So you have all the flexibility of a section, but it gets jammed inside of a column. So, I mean, that's way, way beyond um, this lesson right here. But let us just uh, save this and preview it as long as I've been yammering on this long and just see 
what happens is we grab this thing and we pull it down. And as Tara had said in her comments, uh, you don't need to use the Chrome inspector tool to do any of the swipes method or learn any of Catherine's stuff, even though she does show in there somewhere how to use the uh, mobile responsive thing. Uh, but so we pull this down, not just do a little bit at a time. And you can see everything's getting closer to each other. And then boom, once we get here, then it's going to flip things around a little bit more. So actually what it's not doing is because this is a two column row here is taking this and putting it down onto the second line. So you basically get the same effect as the one below it. That was a one column row with two headlines in it. And then as we go along again, we have the two, um, two different rows here sitting there nice side by side. So that's a whole bunch of different ways you can skin this same cat. And I will come back in here and we will look at our CSS, uno mas. And uh, hopefully you can read that on the screen because I'm not going to put all that in a comment. Basically, it's just repeating the same thing, just changing out the uh, front part of the CSS ID selector right there. And how do I 